Да, я готовила свой доклад на английском и буду читать на... и говорить по-английски. I'm going to talk in English, but um, yeah, because I prepared everything in English, so um, thank you very much for inviting me. I'm going. Some of you know my homepage, our homepage already. So this is myself and the team for work many years ago. To stay on the homepage because we like it so much. And uh, the. Not online. So um, the pictures I'm going to show are on the homepage. So So those who want to read it again, there's no problem with that. Um, so um, I thought it might be useful uh, when talking about the new academy to look back to the new artist because it is a very common to speak about the shift in the way of uh, the artistic um, behavior or strategy or what was is very often called while painting as a generic. Uh, term, which then has to be looked at, of course, uh, in uh, in detail, and um, I think um, that actually the turn from the 80s to the 90s, or from the new artist to the new academy, is a less determined shift, as it might appear or as it often appears. So we can't really say, strictly speaking, that it has been wild uh, and, and uh, chaotic painting at one point in the 80s and then <coughs> turned over to academic painting uh, in the 90s, even if we concentrate on the figure of Timur. So one thing I would say is the uh, maybe the um, uh, ideology which we try to fix somehow by what <coughs> happened and by what was said and another thing is to compare it which with what uh, was actually produced in the art. So my example is Yevgeny Kozlov um, for the 80s first. I will, uh, this paper has several uh, chapters and in the first I will uh, try to explain that actually if it comes to the 80s uh, there were uh, manifest uh, productions of um, um, uh, one could say models of traditional art or even of, of uh, religious art in the work of Yevgeny Kozlov and I think it fits very well with the two papers that were given this morning. So um, actually uh, you might know that Yevgeny Kozlov and Timur uh, Novikov had been uh, together in a group of new artists in the 80s and that then uh, starting with the new academy, Evgeny Kozlov stayed away from this general movement, uh, although as I said this was not to a lack of, of knowledge of drawing or painting or uh, because um, uh, uh, he was not um, um, able to follow the tendency, but it is more um, uh, uh, what I would call a Welt an Schreibung, a point of view, a world uh, view, uh, with the word classic and classicism. So, uh, what I say, in essence, Timur Novikov and Yevgeny Kozlov had different views about the meaning of classic for contemporary art. For Timur Novikov, classic was an equivalent to classical, a canon of beauty inherited that can be taught and reproduced. As in other historic periods, such a canon can be revived as classicism expressing a bent and charm of worldview. Uh, more specifically, to more use new Russian classicism as a propaganda weapon to save beauty in an area of modernist primitiveness. Uh, here, the adjective new and Russian are connected with an ideological struggle which now 
2014 has turned into an anti-Western liberal state of in Russia, although, uh, without any reference to neo academism um, Yevgeny Kozlov has a different perception of classic. For him, classic does not refer to any historical concept. So it's not something that when you look back and then you uh, analyze and you state uh, certain stages. But it is a, produ a product of a complex spiritual process he described in 1991. Uh, when it comes to, to the art production, the artist must first achieve a state called the art of the future. So this is the term uh, label, which he created which is the richness of desire and the desires of these riches. So, inside the artist, before he actually produces something as a material process, he creates inside this state, which he calls the richness of desires and desires for these riches. So it's an internal transformation which leads accordingly to an, uh, a production uh, and this would be uh, a general statement. So he uh, shifts his attention to what goes on inside more than uh, to what comes out because the one is the, clear, uh, is, is the condition for the second. So this art of the future or art within or to be even more succinct art materializes in a product that can be defined as classic. So this is the main difference Whenever the product materializes, this is a classic. So this is a matter of definition, you really, where you can follow or you can say, uh, I don't agree, but in the concept of this uh, theory of art of the future, you first, the artist first uh, puts it attention to what was inside, a process which he watches and creates at the same time, so it's a double thing and then he produces and the product will always remain classic because it's material. Okay. Um, in other words, and with reference to the spirit of the process, art is the unseen and its result, the work of art is classic. So we don't do this distinction uh, normally when we speak about art or work of art, we use it in the same way. In this very specific theory, theory art would be the process inside and then it materializes as a, as a work of art which is then classic. The impulse giving birth to art is not predictable. It is very important that each time this process occurs, when it occurs, it does so in a new way. That is why new works of art are different from previous ones. So this process occurs in a new way and accordingly uh, the work of art will be different because it's a different you could call it spiritual substance or ongoing. Uh, <clears throat> so accordingly, a classic can appear at the moment where this unique impulse brings about a desire in the artist to create a work of unforeseen harmony. Um, so harmony is a, a crude word in the theory. And I give the example of a painting from 1909 which actually bears is from the cycle Novaya Classica, New Classic. Uh, it is often translated as New Classicism, but since I want to stress the difference, I simply translate it as New Classic, which might sound a bit odd. Um, so if we compare uh, the ways uh, that um, Timur and uh, Kozlov uh, think about the achievement in the, for work of art, there are many similarities. Uh, Kozlov uses the word harmony in the way that Mjolnikov uses the term beauty. Uh, so this must be achieved with the word of art. Uh, however, for Kozlov, new is a syn synonym for unforeseen, not for a renewal of canon. We will see later that he uses the canon, but he, it is very important for him that uh, this must be done in a new way. If a new work possesses this quality of unforeseen harmony, um, then it can immediately become a classic. So uh, this is um, very important that for himself to achieve a work of art that he's satisfied with, there must be something unforeseen in it. Um, so um, the 
the new classic cycle has nothing to do with classicism, as we see the word, we have the word classica in it, although it is, uh, has nothing to do with uh, um, uh, the classical canon. And Yekaterina uh, Andreeva uh, stated uh, later that it's interesting or it's paradoxical that uh, Timur Novikov was um, uh, to some way influenced by Yevgeny's cause of approach to art in the 80s when she said that Timur Novikov departed from wildness under the influence of Koslov's strict style, um, so in the 80s. And therefore, uh, in the first part of this um, uh, paper, I will first have a look at the 80s as they were for Yevgeny Kozlov in some respect. It's a very uh, restricted point of view and it's only what I chose in view of this discussion classic and classicism. So this is one of the drawings from uh, uh, the early 80s by Yevgeny Kozlov and uh, um, it's uh, uh, a drawing uh, of his, from a series, the Gulf of Finland series, and you see that uh, he has this um, very compositional approach at the time, so his works are often uh, highly uh, structured and composed. And uh, there are others more graffiti-like, but this is something which is current and goes through from, from the early 80s. Um, then, um, if we talk about um, the importance of the group movement for Kozlov, it was more important not in the fact as being a member of a crowd of festivities, it was in his art important as to the point where his fellow artists became, uh, uh, entered his own work as figures as subjects of his own work and I will give uh, several examples from the uh, late 80s especially uh, with uh, portraits of Timur's and others and uh, so um, there was in the 80s the habit for some of the new artists to do collective works Koslo didn't really participate in that um, he was more reclusive with his art but uh, the movement, the meetings uh, had an influence, a direct influence on his work. If we look at the smaller uh, photography, this one, uh, this is um, um, a negative from 18, uh, from 1985, which he then, then turned into a painting which is called Timor, or Prospect Timor da Cane, and you see a, a large um, picture of it, a black and white to the left, when it was photographed at uh, Timor's um, gallery. So uh, the main aspect of what happens uh, with this artist and how he presents and how the end of his work is uh, what I would call transfiguration. So they reappear, but they reappear, they appear differently. They, they are not portraits in the classical sense that they, you know, they would be shown as they are, but they would be shown as they could be or will be. So this is always a look towards the future. And uh, we see that some uh, of the, um, the um, characteristics of, uh, um, of, of, the, uh, of Timor are enhanced and changed. Uh, on the painting here, uh, he is very dynamic and he shows a lot of willpower and he's going straight forward with, on the picture, on the photograph, it's much more playful. So there are changes in that. Um, other examples um, are quite striking and I must say that I was not aware of them myself. Uh, I just discovered that recently. Uh, there are some large paintings from the end of the 80s which are, only, are also shown uh, in uh, several exhibitions among them, the large exhibition uh, at the Kultur in Stockholm from 1988. And uh, you see that the compositional approach uh, very much resembles uh, the um, uh, uh, Raphael Sistine Madonna, only that it's mirrored. You have a diagonal figure here in the middle. Uh, originally on the photograph, uh, this was uh, said in Drive Africa, and then here on the left, this is the figure of uh, um, 
put sewage and the rodeo up down. So this originally came from a, a photograph, so we, what we can't say is that uh, Kozlov took a, a picture from, say, a classical picture or well-known a symbol of art and transformed it with his own thought because uh, the, con uh, uh, the concept, the composition uh, existed before in the picture uh, differently. I will show you the picture in a, in a second. So, um, if you see the composition to the left has a diagonal going from the right top angle to the lower left, then this is done and it's the other way around, but there are uh, very similarities without uh, uh, without saying, maintaining that it's a copy. So it's certainly not a copy, but um, it, it uh, keeps main features. Um, also the view to heaven, uh, with the difference only that in Raffer's painting, uh, we are, uh, the viewer is located on the earth and looks up, whereas on the left painting, which was called later Anna Karenina II, uh, the viewer has a central position and uh, occupies um, a side uh, towards the heaven but also towards the earth because down here, uh, very, uh, at a very large distance with the little houses, this is the earth. So the whole setting is situated actually somewhere in space. So it's a very possible uh, painting. And um, the original, just uh, to the um, so um, this painting started with a picture taken at uh, one of the theater uh, theater performances uh, in the mid 80s and here you see the composition with uh, the three um, actors or artists and then uh, the next step would be a photo where some elements are already painted over so that they disappear and the composition gets, uh, gets more strictly and then as I said the, uh, last, sorry, uh, the last step would be um, So here again we have this uh, painting which is a rather large painting and it's also important that it has this frame around which uh, marks the whole setting as something uh, located in another world. So the viewer stands in front and somehow enters the scenery through this frame. Uh, another example of uh, works um, retracing um, um, the cultural heritage of, of, of art uh, are two portraits from uh, again from the late 80s of uh, two composers, the two composers, Nove uh, uh, uh that you probably have heard of. So it's Igor Berejin and Valery Alakhov, um, and these uh, portraits were painted on black paper. Uh, it's a very thin black paper which is used as a uh, protection for photographs where you put it in for, um, um, for uh, raw material for developing photographs. So they are glued together and then uh, have these side um, margins. And if you compare them to the uh, Apostle Peter and the Apostle Paul from the early 15th century by Andrei Rubioff and Dalin Chorney, you will see that um, again you have features which are quite similar. Uh, the low horizon, for instance, here uh, is a typical uh, feature from icons, and of course uh, the, um, the form is such it is very uh, long. Uh, posture to some degree and uh, the um, um, uh, position of the figures but then of course there are a lot of differences again so it's what Kostov calls the uh, novelty, a classic novelty so you see that uh, the cultural heritage is present 
but the way it is, um, uh, the way the painting is produced and comes out has, uh, is quite different from the original. So it's not obvious at the first uh, immediately that there, there, there has been this, um, this influence. And again, this. Uh, um, asking Evgeny Kozlov whether he had done it on purpose, he couldn't remember. So I would say this is something that uh, uh, comes out from the subconscious. And that is uh, also quite striking. Um, it's a quite well-known portrait of Timur, a man, Timur Novikov, uh, called uh, Timur Skarsini uh, Merukami, Timur Novikov with long hands. And um, I put to the left uh, the oldest known icon of the prize, Panto Grasso, uh, from the St. Catherine's Monastery. And now, um, one of the features which has uh, similarities, if you look on the eyes, this part here, you have one eye looking uh, down and the other looking up. Here again, it's one eye up and the other down, so they're treated differently. You have uh, here the hollow, and here you have the form of the gazebo. You have, of course, the crosses all over, which is marked here on the book. Uh, the position of the book is not so visible, but these, this part here uh, corresponds to the leaves, the top leaves of the book. And uh, again, it's quite interesting that uh, here, um, one hand holds this bone arms, and of course you don't see them on the icon, um, but uh, as a, a sign of, of uh, the transition of life or even of death, um, um, it is very important on this portrait, and it gives, uh, a, 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 how do you say, an idea of a dimension of Timur, of the portrait person, which goes uh, much uh, further than just, you know, a more or less realistic um, um, uh, painting or portrait. So it's really, uh, as Eugene has said, it's not a portrait of Timur, it's a portrait of the state which Timur gradually reached, but this portrait was from 1988. So of course you couldn't know what would happen in the 90s or even later. Um, so, um, as you see, um, we have in the 80s already these uh, features with uh, taking up um, all these elements from the cultural heritage. It's not something that would come up as a, I would say, as a surprise at one point in 89 or 90, whatever date you fix, but this is already there. And even if it has not been uh, I'm not sure whether anyone has actually um, made this point before, and I don't think so, so that might look a bit artificial to do that now, but I think it's justified because you, uh, you see that uh, this plays a role, even if we call this uh, um, the Leningrad avant-garde, or we say that you know, they, did what, they used whatever color they wanted, they used whatever material, whatever stuff, they did whatever they wanted, there are, um, Depending on the artist, of course, there are some quite uh, clear uh, structures when you come and analyze the article uh, to cause the point. So, um, I will now come to the second uh, part. And this is more to do with the, um, I would say, uh, the idea of classic and classicism. It has less to do, uh, it is not a comparison of paintings of Kozlov and uh, Timo Novikov or works as such. It is more a theoretical analysis of how uh, artists can think or justify or reflect what they are doing. Uh, so again here on the right uh, you have another painting from the new classic cycle. Uh, it, is, it is called Love from Cosmos. There were uh, Seven were to be done. The seventh love for God uh, has never been realized. Uh, so there were six motives were elaborated, and uh, two of them in two um, versions. And you can see that on this picture, um, where they were shown at the first uh, large exhibition on the Palace Bridge in 1990, which was. Uh, 
organized or co-produced by Ivan Mavsesyan, who this was the first one, and then there was the second one, which is also quite well known in 91. And here you have several uh, paintings, uh, five of them, two in double versions. So again, this is love for work and this is love for beauty. And again, we have to tell beauty which plays such a big role in uh, the new academy, uh, uh, from the new academy of Tibor Novikov. Uh, by the way, interestingly, the picture on top here, the painting on top, is by Georgi Gurianov. Um, it was originally painted for the Green Cost of Collection two by three meters. Uh, this one, like a couple of others, never made their way really to the collection, either because uh, uh, the artist uh, didn't give it or he uh, retrieved it. So that's another uh, interesting uh, uh, moment. This large collection to buy three which which uh, started in 1990. I'll come back to that a bit later. And again, you can see uh, the two paintings of the new classic series. Uh, in an uh, exhibition uh, in uh, um, October 1990 um, uh, in the exhibition Tenderness and Variety, I love California. Um, you can also watch a video by uh, Judith Lesnick on this uh, exhibition uh, on YouTube, just there's a link here. And uh, mm, this exhibition is interesting in that um, many, what we could call, members of the new academy participated in that, like um, Andre Nebede, for instance, uh, Timo Novikov, Georgi Gurianov, Denis Sebilski. So uh, this was, in a way, still a mixed exhibition. That at that point, there would uh, be a strict division between you know, artists that participate in the new academy and others that will assign themselves to the new academy. Because uh, at that point, as I said, Kozlov remained out of that new movement. Um, then, um, I, I would like to go to that part which is uh, not so easy to produce in a paper, maybe it needs to be reread if you have time. Uh, for for the, the quotations. And um, I said already that um, for Kozlov in this talk that we had in 1991, he stated that art is what goes inside and the work of art is the result of it, what is produced. And uh, he said, beyond this classical approach, the truly new direction in art is that which evolves within the human being who is simultaneously creating it. So this is a dumb process, something goes on with it, but you also create what's going on. So this can't, cannot be separated. It's not inspiration only in the way that you get some information. It's nothing that you simply produce by uh, making a thought, but it's, it's a dumb process, it's intertwined. Uh, to understand this art in all its implications, a certain inner freedom is required, which must also be present externally. Here it is essential that the human being feels and sees the forces within him or herself which, help, which are helping to create this new world of art inside. If one feels these forces is a way of and can see them, if this world comes into being inside oneself, then regardless of what one creates, it will be intelligible and is indispensable to all people. For what transpires within to allow this art to develop internally exists only to let visual form to the given information. It thus becomes impossible to deny its visual existence. That the artist's task is to give the visual form. So you see, this remains rather vague about what uh, what actually comes out and how it should be done. Uh, questions of style have no importance to that. And this is a big difference with Timo Novikov, who is quite um, um, quite strict about uh, not strict, quite uh, clear about uh, what should be done and how it should be done. Even as I said, uh, he doesn't observe this for his own art, and um, it's more a point of a Weltanschauung. And uh, he says that. Um, 
for instance, uh, in a description of Piotr Uriano's art, uh, that typical example of beauty is the one uh, shown in uh, Greek art. So he gives examples, and uh, I also, um, in the later uh, part, I say that uh, we have a prose where you can say that uh, Koslov is more about self-formation and Novikov is more about education of his pupils. So this is one of the main differences. I've been uh, given two minutes, which are probably over, before um, some questions maybe, so I would say um, the rest is to be read. Uh, it's all there on the home page. Uh, I would say a word about this small exhibition which I have put out, which is an exhibition by Yevgeny Kozlov, and a project he's doing this year, and it's called The Classic, and this is actually also gives you the idea of classic because um, I'll just take this picture of his from the 80s. So this is a, an original photograph by Yevgeny Kozlov, which has become classic because the artist decided so. He doesn't really need to have a thing already uh, declared classic by someone else. He does it his own. But then he transforms it. And again, we have this process of transfiguration. He lifts up the photo, which you can't do here because I had to protect it. But it's inside. So if you lift it up, that's what you see. So he continues to create a work of art with the picture. And he does it on the back, too. And in short, we can say that, okay, so if this is simply a moment in time, a fixed moment in time, materialized in one way or another, so the rest uh, takes us out of time. Okay. So we have, we have this double situation of a fixation and something that is internal. But of course, and because of his uh, love for his fellow artists, you will find we selected neo academics. Uh, some of the pictures are mine. It's also done with a lot of humor. So uh, it's an homage to that period at the same time and to everything, uh, to everyone who represents the creative landscape of St. Petersburg and Lenin. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Ой, здравствуйте,